So hello everybody, um, thanks for welcoming me here. I'm really happy to be there in the US to show some of the stuff I was working on. Um, so that is a fancy uh, name, but it's a relatively simple uh, approach to optimize basically the evaluation of monadic structures, but here I will show um, basically how to improve the, the speed of uh, state, uh, state T. So I'm Alice Koshar, I'm the, the CTO at Best Man, and we are a, a spin of the, of the EPFL. Basically, we are building a, um, a fleet management software for autonomous vehicles. So it's a way to you know, create transport services out of these things. And uh, the supervision engine is all written in, uh, in Scala. And we are hiring, so if that sounds appealing to you, just come by me and let's discuss it. So what's the problem I'm trying to solve here? It's, um, it's basically if you if you have a big list of things and you want to you know apply a, a, a transformation with a monad on it, um, like for example you fold on the list <coughs> and then you, you know you do a lot of state operation on it, uh, basically you will uh, you will uh, stack overflow right. So why this? You know it's fundamentally it's because uh, we want non-strict evaluation because we want to be expressive. At least I want non-strict evaluation. But the model of computation we use to express this computation um, is quite different from the one that the machine used, you know, to, to run this computation. That's basically because, you know, we use this lambda calculus, but we are running this thing on Turing machines, right? So fundamentally, that's the core issue. How does GHC, um, the Haskell compiler, solve uh, this problem? Well, basically, it used an intermediate language called the STG, and um, so I won't go into details into how it works. There is a great paper from uh, Simon Peter Jones which explained that. But basically, um, that STG then converted to a sort of C language, where at runtime it has a typical elimination. And so other Scala, uh, Scala Z solve this because, as you know, just a sad reminder, but there's no uh, typical elimination in the in the JVM. So I would say basically that's how uh, uh, Scala Z solve it. <laughs> Which is basically uh, using a trampoline, right? Um, so what is a trampoline? It's a, it's a free uh, uh, interpreter of a function zero. So basically you <coughs> postpone the evaluation of your stuff. You put it in, a, in, in free and thanks to how free is, uh, is written, you, you, you will get a stack state evaluation. Um, in our case, we can specialize a little bit more. Uh, basically we can get a free of, um, of state T and, um, and you know, so basically you will have to write your code like this. Um, you just have to lift F, right, to, to, to lift uh, your, your state into free and then you can evaluate it at the end and it will be a, a stack safe. The only problem is that free is not free and there's a great uh, talk from uh, Kelly Robinson um, which saw that really nicely. Uh, I mean, in order to evaluate this with free, you have to create a lot of structure um, that you will use a lot of memory, and uh, I mean that will be slow uh, at runtime. So that's quite a problem if you want good performance. So can we do better? Is there a way to, to you know to make things better? Uh, yes, but first we have to give up on um, on being evaluation strategy agnostic. What does that mean? Is that you have um, a single monad and. It, Depending on how, if you evaluate it with ID, or if you evaluate it with, for example, in CAS with Eval or in Scalazi with Trampoline, um, basically it will be a, a, a lazy or not, and, and, and stack safe or not. So basically we'll have to give up on this, we'll have to specialize our, our monads. And actually we have to accept the unreasonable effectiveness of erasure. And so we'll have to use the evil uh, as instance of. So. <laughs> <laughs> So let's see how, how, how we'll do that. So maybe there's a way to avoid the uh, instance stuff, but uh, we'll discuss it later. So what we'll do is that we'll define uh, uh, two types. Val, which is just a helper to do the casting verification um, in a little bit safer way. And uh, another type, which is Thank, which is just a simple algebra to do the, the evaluation. And uh, then we'll rewrite state with this. So the impression implementation also here is not the uh, most performant one. This is the one you can actually have an encoding which is more performant, closer to what there is in the in CATS eval. Um, but actually, this one is simpler to to understand. So first, we'll do this uh, this val type, right? 
it's a way to um, um, so basically you, you can put everything into any but then you will get the inference that will get uh, you know kind of crazy with uh, so what what I do in the in the in the first line right the type val equal any with and this type is basically uh, it, it creates a uh, um, it, it prevents you from getting things in from directly this type. So it gives you a bit of safety. You, you cast this into there, and then you're explicit about this is what I, uh, I just cast. Well, I so don't know. I just passed it to F, and then so I did what I wanted after that. <laughs> well, yeah, you, you know, that, that's just a way to be... I mean, for me, it's just a discipline. It means that I know when I use val, I have to put all the time the explicit type. So you know, that's what I'm saying here, security by convention, but it's not security. It's just a way for me to know, okay, I'm, I'm working in, a, in, the, in the crazy world and you should be careful. And you know, this kind of thing I just put at the end, it's, I don't use them on the other side, but it's just a way for me to avoid make, making mistakes when I write code. Yeah. Why don't you use an actual type tag? Um, I mean, like, val well, valid type tag equals A. Well, so basically, all, all this work is in a, a project which does not depend on caps and scale so you know, I, I, I didn't have a lot of stuff, but that's equivalent, right? Yeah, it's equivalent, but at least it tracks, it keeps the explicit types with you, so that you wouldn't be, like, you, quote, quote, unquote, you wouldn't be able to cast the wrong thing, but like, you would, you would at least know that this particular val secretly under the surface is a valid A. Yeah, but I don't think you care about that information, because at the time you use this, you have to, you usually do both sides at the same time. Okay. You, you cast and verify in the same in the same operation. So we'll see later a more completely it work. Um, so then we need this you know small algebra to do the uh, evaluation of the of the magnetic structure. So it's pretty simple, right? A, a, a funk is just an alias for a list of operation, and an operation is just an algebraic data type with um, with free constructor. So actually, we'll just use the the last two one in the, in the next slide. Um, well, basically, that's what um, will, will give you your, your list of operations that you will uh, apply one after each other on your on your, on your monad to, to get your your result. So, it's in, in essence, it does the same thing as a as a free uh, evaluator, but we can you know specialize it a bit more to get more performance. So, you know, it's not really handy to use it like this when you implement a, a monad. So. There's a few uh, smart constructors for that. And so, uh, basically, this thunk, you, you, you really have a, a, a value in your thunk, and then you map or you flat map on it, right, on, on this, on this uh, erased value. And so here is some smart constructor to actually do that. And you give the explicit type here. And basically, you know, you, you, you don't have to keep the type with you because you just use here. That's why you, you, I think you don't need to, to keep the information. The, the only thing is that I, I will say later, you could get maybe know what the thunk keep, uh, keep in it. But anyway, this is a way you know, to construct the thunk. So each time you do an operation, it will add it in the list. So now let's see how we can um, re-implement a, a state T uh, using this. So first, how, how is it usually written, right? Um, so you have in the case class, so this is taken from cas. In the in the case class, you have the the value, the monad with inside the, the state function, right? And, and and then when you flat map, you basically create a new uh, instance of, of of state, and you and you change the function together. And that's basically what stack overflow when you run it, right? Because you create this big uh, stream of uh, flat map. So now let's see if you can implement it with this. So it's a bit ugly, right? It's not so nice when you, because you, you, you are working with this uh, erased uh, uh, thing, so you have to be explicit with the types every time you map. So maybe that's here, or you could keep the, the type information, you know, so you don't have to, to do this. So basically now state T, you know, the type is erased. You just have this thing here. And it's, wh wh when, you, when you map or flat map on it, you basically, you know, Say which type it will be at the end, and and, and then it will be refined and, and, and erased. So surprisingly, this goes pretty fast, right, on the JVM, because the the verification process is is a yeah is, is not a so costly operation. Um, so here is just how we implement, you know, the the pure and stately. So you know, it's like. You have to map on the stack, right? 
even if there is no value, but you discard it. And basically, the, the evaluation that I will show later, you, you start always with a, with a unit value, right? So it's why you map here, and, and you just uh, put a constant value uh, in the thing, basically. Um, so now, <coughs> let's see how we can uh, evaluate this thing. So that's basically the, you know, the evaluation code. It's, it looks probably quite similar to what we'll see in the, um, in the free interpreter. It's just that you, you, know, you, you revert the list and then you, 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 you go through it and you apply each operation on the, um, on the thing. And yeah, I mean, I, I won't go too much into, into details uh, here. Maybe if you have a question, we can, we can discuss later. So the way to get this uh, faster, it's instead of using a, a list, we can directly construct a, a tree of, uh, of objects where all the value are, are erased. It's basically what um, a cat's eval is doing. And you will get even a slightly better performance. So now that we have this implementation, we can basically write um, the code as we wanted to, to write at the beginning, which means So here, this is the actual code of the, of the benchmark. So now using the, the scatter implementation, you can, you know, you just use a state, which is basically state T ID, like this. Uh, you don't have to lift anything, uh, et cetera. Um, and, and basically, it will be stack safe because it uses the thunk uh, abst abstraction we just seen before, right? And then we have the, the same thing with Scalazy, where you basically uh, uh, lift into free. Um, and actually, the, the results are pretty good. Um, so this is yeah, the, the one we've seen in with uh, 100 elements. I did a more sophisticated benchmark, but uh, actually I don't have them, uh, them here. Um, but actually, yeah, it, it gets better performance. So what, what, what can we do next? Because we see that we can get faster for the, for the lazy, uh, lazy evaluation of state. But if you use this one for... Um, you know, for a small list of value where you know it will not know the stack, it will be pretty slow compared to, you know, a pure traditional implementation. So what we have to do is that we should specialize our uh, uh, mana transformer implementation according to the evaluation strategy we want. So the one we just see could be the, the, the state lazy and, um, and we should write a, a, a strict one which then can be, uh, can be even, even faster than what we, we have today. Um, it also means that you know wh wh when you use the, the lazy one, you do, you, the ma underlying mana doesn't have to be a, a necessarily a, a stack safe, you know. So yeah, it's a, I, th I think it's a, it's a good improvement. Um, so the question is that can we make uh, things safer and maybe more general? So we can probably uh, keep track of the of the type inside and maybe have less uh, uh, hacking around. Um, I did try, you know, maybe. Maybe we can find an abstraction that helps us writing these things, you know. But the, the the problem is that the more abstraction you will push, the you will lose performance. So yeah, it's a it's a hard trade off. Um, so the more efficient structure for thank, it's what I was referring. You can use a, a basically a, a complete uh, a tree of objects directly linked together. And so actually, I did that. What, what I'm presenting you is what I've written in, in January. Uh, in between, I had actually improved the implementation and did this change uh, in a branch where I don't know where it is, so I wasn't able to present uh, the last version of the code. But uh, yeah, I know that if you use this uh, approach to re-implement uh, free, you wouldn't get much uh, improvement. But then if you use the version with the, um, with the tree of objects, then you, you definitely get, uh, get better performance. Um, what, what you find in the repo right now is uh, um, I implemented a, a free in terms of free T, but it seems like if you specialize again free and you have different types, you can even you know get, get better performance again. Um, so yeah, and all of this is basically you know fighting because I like non-strict evaluation, but I'm using a strict <laughs> language. And, uh, and so something which is also of interest is the, a new project which started with something which is called GHCVM. Um, basically, it's uh, trying to do the same thing as GHCJS is doing for JavaScript, but you know, for, for, the, for the JVM. 
So yeah, I think that's quite an interesting year project to follow as well because it will make these things easier, right? So thank you um, for your question. Yes. It seems like it would be, I mean, if you wanted to, to make this a little bit more exposed, like for example, as a, as a replacement for you know, Scalza.free, yeah. um, it seems like it would be possible to so, uh, make it reasonably pleasant to use by number yes. one, having the tags track yeah. the types, and number two, maybe throwing some implicit macros on there, or, or some macros in yeah, yeah. implicit syntax. No, definitely, I, I just kept you know, away the polishing to you know be sure that the, the thing works nicely. But definitely I mean the wave tank is right now uh, you know it's pretty inconvenient. It's really yeah. boilerplate to write. So we can probably improve it. And anyway you know it's kind of the philosophy of Scala Z it's we write it directly so you don't have to write it. So <laughs> that I know yeah. Okay. Yeah, sh surely you, you should be able to find it approach. Uh, I I spammed you with an idea for eliminating the, the casting. Yes. Uh, and do you think that <coughs> So it's, what <coughs> uh, so it's kind of like what you would do. It, it's very Gaddish. It's like what you would do in Idris. Um, you re, you re, you reinvent the RDS structure list or what or tree yeah. or what have you yeah. to encode the constraints that you need existentially. Exactly. And then you can have more type parameters to your map and app. So, uh, okay. right. so be but very okay. be very very careful with that. So I found some bugs with the Gaddit stuff recently. Yeah. Where the the compiler. Computes like okay, you need you need like you need to compute some type you know alpha, and you actually end up computing some type like f of alpha, yeah. and it just very happily like allows f of alpha to equal alpha, even though it's like trivially obvious in the proof that that can't possibly be okay. Even within a single scope, I've seen it like completely lose this stuff. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, very, I wouldn't try to use critical. like existential type parameters, get it style because it, it's it's broken in Scala, so. But if you use something else, then it might work better. And do you think that will uh, <coughs> if you get in, uh, maybe performance doing less testing? I don't know about that. I mean, you <laughs> I mean, has, yeah. has on the Debian basically. You, you, yeah, yeah, you, you, you won't. But, but I think that's why I get these results, right? Because I was a bit surprised at first. I didn't steal a lot of stuff, right? But it's still like faster than the other thing. Because, yeah, it's quite free. Yeah. But no, I don't think it would be more efficient. Yeah, yeah, because at all the at all the abstract it's code, code is, it's, it's any rep, but all the abstract code anyway. <laughs> yeah. you know, all the so, so then, so then it's more about some com conveniency for writing. The, I mean, safety <coughs> and convenience for like writing. The, yeah. yeah, I don't know about convenience because part of that strategy is oh well, I have to read a single yes. list. You thought you were done doing that, but no, you've got to do it again. No, exactly, but yeah, I mean, I think it's a. That's quite a cost, but I think it's the only way to get the same amount of work to do for it to be some common stuff. But that, that's unreasonable. It's just kind of clear that that intermediate is not really the abstraction necessarily. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, if you go back to. Well, it, it depends. Like, one of the hallmarks of this is like, if you have a list that encodes existential relationships, then also your full has to be. Has to be a rank two type. Yes. But I mean, you see, you have to repeat a lot of types, right? Here. That's not very convenient. You have to th th you you have to give that explicitly and be sure about what you give. You know. I mean, the compiler would still help you a little bit. Yeah. You you, you are invested to yourself when you write the the, the logic of the algorithm. And it's actually hard to reason because you you read that and you like. You know, the code you see here is not what is will be run now, it's what is, you know, deferred, but it may be the operation. Anyway. Yeah. Like, I, I guess your thumb could be a tree, and then... That is a bit of a bit. Right. Yes. And you can do the same kind of things that I can list in the link that I sent you. Um, yes. Slack. You can do that with binary trees as well. Yes, that's what I was thinking yesterday when you were talking so, about. If you if you numerically balance your tree, right, yes. no matter what where you do your absent, right, then you should be able to keep those constraints encoded but still have all the type safety with yeah. the essentials that come out when you have a match on that tree. Makes sense. And uh, yeah, well the thing that I'd love to try that's I think one of the next two. Thank you for the ideas. Yeah. <laughs>